Well, and like you said in the beginning, these cameras don't like low light. They're if you oh, they hate it. Yeah, yeah. I look like I have a disease. They're going to name after me every time I turn this thing on. <laughs> well, let's, let's come up with a disease that you have. <laughs> that's what psychiatry is. Or something. <laughs> that's what psychiatry is. Scott uh, has right. invested in a big, big lighting setup. But what you're seeing there is, is a disease. <laughs> Can't help it. Hopefully he's going to be okay. He's still, we've got him out Kickstarter. We're not Kickstarter. What's the other one? They send go you money. Yeah, yeah. Go, I got a GoFundMe page, yeah. a lighting GoFundMe page. We're doing stem cell therapy on him. and uh, See if we can get that nose smaller. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing <laughs> what people will give you money for me. You might get it. All right. You guys ready? Yeah, I think so. Right, here we go. I'm Scott Rouse. I'm a body language expert and analyst, and I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation of body language. I created the course Body Language Tactics with Greg Hartley. Mark? I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language, and I help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, gain credibility every time they speak, including some of the leaders of the G7. Greg. I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written a few books on body language and behavior. Also did this thing with Scott called bodylanguagetactics.com, and I spend most of my time in, on Wall Street and in corporate America today. Chase. Hey, I'm Chase Hughes. I'm a behavioral expert, number one best-selling author in human behavior, and I teach persuasion and influence to the government and the general public. Excellent. Well, we're, today we're going to talk about the debate. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we all wore coats to add, or jackets to add some decorum to the dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no kidding. Yeah, so uh, as we go through this, now here's what's going to happen. You may be on the left, and you're going to say, these guys are all on the right. And you may be on the right, and you're going to say, ah, these guys are all on the left. Believe me, we go right down the middle. All we're doing here is telling you what we see. We're not for one side or the other side. We're not, we're not for anybody. Politically, we're, 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 we're Switzerland. We, don't, we could not possibly care less. That's not why we're here. So if you're thinking about commenting, oh, you're a lefty or a righty, no, nope, we're not. Sorry, you can do it. As long as you don't use foul language, you can stay on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we, we but, uh, hope that all of you are right and that Soros and the McCanns and Trump and Biden and everybody sends those checks. Yeah, yeah. please. We're please on, man. send those checks. Yeah. All right. So uh, I guess we'll get started. At the top here, let's talk about, let, let's go over what we thought about because uh, for a, a, we're in a time constraint here. So let's, let's, let's go over what we thought about the uh, debate and the videos we're going to look at uh, before we can get started. Greg, what do you think? Sure. I'm going to give you a process. Um, I think Biden came prepared for a fight. He had done a lot of drill. You can tell, you can see tripwires and his brain turn on and those kinds of things. He was prepared for a fight. But Trump's always prepared for a fight, so no big deal for him. Trump came in trying to slice off the hard left. And I think Biden held off pretty well for the first couple of salvos. And then he got to Green New Deal and taxes and kind of crumbled. After that, he, he gets to the real fight. And when, when the real fight starts, he starts to kind of flake up a little bit and it's not the fight he's prepared for. And he starts to respond with some fight or flight. And when he does, when Trump hits him with a, don't use the word smart with me, he's not prepared for New York done. He comes at him and then it starts to fall apart. You start seeing escalation and blink rate and all those things. And then the escalation occurs and they both go at each other really hard. However, I will say Donald Trump showed some uncharacteristically true body language around frustration in here. And I'll point it out as we get in, but this was the reason it turned into a dumpster fire is it went from plan to fight or flight. And you can see it. That's my opinion. Chase. I think this whole thing, uh, we saw a lot of preparation, like Greg said on Biden's part, there was some of these lines that are not characteristic and the speech patterns aren't really characteristic of his normal patterns. So there's some lines that he knew would set off the audience. And there's a few ways to win a debate. But in the end, whoever typically produces the most emotion in whoever's viewing the debate is the person who will win the debate. But non-verbally, we're looking for a couple of things. We saw Trump more willing to move horizontally away from the podium, taking up a little bit more space and this moving away from the podium thing is something you'll see people do. This is, podium is some kind of a protector or a barrier between the audience and me that keeps me safe. And Trump is more willing to move away. Biden 
took up a little bit less space. And we saw Biden, when he's on message throughout the entire debate, we saw those smooth, symmetrical hand gestures. And if he's using one hand on message, the hand would move in time with the words he was saying, or an illustrator, as Greg would call it, or a lot of people would call it. And we saw eye contact with the moderator and audience a lot more in, in Joe Biden. Trump made eye contact downward. He looked up into the, into the world, so to speak. And we saw Biden, the only one, I think, through the whole debate, was making direct and focused eye contact on that camera to make sure that the message is going straight into the person at home. So there's a lot of ways to win the debate. I think that Biden came best prepared to create emotion in the person watching it. And I think those statements were crafted to do just that. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I think I'll look at going forward. We've got more debates to come, certainly another with these two characters in there. What would I would be wanting to see from them so that they can move forward in their style and the way they contact the audience? Well, Biden, I would want to see uh, plenty more down the camera and going for symmetry rather than asymmetry. He's so easily knocked off when he's only asymmetrical with his gestures. When he gets symmetrical, he's able to last longer down the camera. So I would be asking him to do more of that. Trump uh, was more involved in attacking the partner on stage or even, you know, getting involved with the, the moderator. I would be wanting him to go down the camera even more because if Biden can really center himself, then he's going to be a real contender and Trump needs to come up with an extra level in order to contend with that. But all of that said, the thing that needs the most work going forward is the structure of the debate, the physical structure of it. Because the moderator in the structure that we've seen has no chance of moderating. They have no power in that physical structure set up. So if they're thinking of doing that next time, they need to rethink really carefully or we're going to have the same bun fight again and it's probably going to escalate even more and it's going to flow out of control. So I would want the moderator standing. I would potentially want those two characters sitting so they're more dominated and that's that way, we'll get more of a conversation rather than a, a supreme argument. Entertaining, um, a bit irrational at times, but not potentially the debate that some people think they should be seeing or maybe wanted to see. Scott, what you got? This reminded me, the way I felt about it, reminded me of a, uh, an episode of Downton Abbey. And this woman was having a baby. And she starts to bleed and she starts to bleed out. And one of the, the assistants or the, the uh, people that work for him was dealing with all this blood. And somebody looked down and said to him, how can you see all that be dealing with this, with what's going on here, all this blood and, and have it not, you know, bother you? Why aren't you freaking out like everybody else? And he said, because I was in the war and I saw so much blood that it actually relaxes me. And in the business that we're in, seeing so much blood, like we like we saw on this thing, it, I, I hate to say that it relaxed me, but it was I was at ease watching it because I understand what's happening, as did we all, and I believe that's why we don't have it where 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 we are headwise with it. And I, what we're seeing is a, an, a again a treasure trove of illustrators and manipulators like I've never seen before. This reminds me of. Uh, one of those battles you have with a troll on the internet when it goes back and forth. They're never going to know who you are, and it doesn't matter what you say to him. You go as hardcore as you want to, and those are my favorites, as you all know. And nobody's ever going to, you know, nothing's ever going to happen. It's going to go away. That's the way this sounds if you were to write it down and to and to tell someone what was going on. So we're we're seeing a couple of people uh, here just going at it like like a boxing match. And it's just tag, tag, tag. And some guy in the middle says, let's bring it up. Let's bring it up. But at the same time, the referee is more like one of those professional wrestling referees where he was really, there's no purpose for him to be there. You're just watching these two guys fuss and they're not really, when you get down to it, they're not fighting. They're just fussing. And, and it's, a, a, it will be a great study for years and years to come of, of in arguments and how not to do them and how to make Usually one person comes out on top and you say, wow, he handled that well or she handled that well. Nobody handled this well. 
from Chris Wallace to President Trump to Vice President Biden. It was it was just a big slap fight the whole time, like an eighth graders slap fight. It was horrible. So, but again, us being used to it, we, we see exactly what it is. And that's why we can't wait to be talking about this today because we're going to be able to break it down and show exactly, uh, hopefully a lot of things that you haven't seen before or didn't think about before. The, the uh, clips we've chosen, and we've just got a few because there's so much in each one of them, are not filled with, the, with the, the classic things that you're looking for, that everybody knows, everybody saw. He talked about this. He did this. What about when he did this? We're going to be looking at and studying the, the, the smaller things as you go through here. Some of the minute stuff, not necessarily micro expressions. There will be some of those. But the things that we look for as interrogators and body language experts when we're dealing with someone uh, who might be violent, who might have done something they shouldn't have done, that we're trying to prep for, that's what we're going to be looking for. We're going to tell you what those things are. So that's what's going on today. So keep in mind, we're not going huge on these. We're going small. So you'll understand things and you'll hear some stuff maybe you've never heard before. And the most important thing to remember about all this is we're not on anybody's side. We're unbiased. We're not on the left. We're on the right. You may think we're on one side or the other, but I'm sure you would be shocked as well as impressed with the <laughs> sides that each of us are on, lie on, <laughs> lie on if we were to go one way or the other. So having said that, let's move forward and, and look at our first video. Can I have one, one okay. point? Guys, we usually look at, in debates, you look at, the, le you look at um, the left partner, the right partner, so you look at Biden and, and, and Trump, but there's also a third party here. We're going to look at Wallace as well, because there's some pieces of him that are really interesting to see. Fair. Right. Mm -hmm. And what we'll also do is, which I should, I should add, is we're not going to do Trump and Biden together. I'm not, when it comes to my turn, I'm going to go, oh, yeah, here's what Trump did and here's what Biden did. We're going to take a, a run through of Trump and then we're going to take a run through of Biden for each, for each of the videos we do. And um, last and time, then Wallace, yeah, Trump and then Wallace. Wallace, right? So the last time we did this, um, Vice President Biden won the toss. So this time it's uh, Trump's turn to go first. Okay, all right, you guys ready? Yeah, yeah. perfect. Let's go. That was the worst part made. of Obama. Let me ask my question. Well, I'll, I'll ask Joe. I, 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 the individual no, I, mandate was the most unpopular aspect of Obamacare. I got rid of it. I'd like you and to, we will protect Mr. people President, with pre-existing President, I'm the moderator of this debate, and I would like you to let me ask my question, and then you can answer Go your ahead. question. Go ahead. You, in the course of these four years, have never come up with a comprehensive plan to replace Obamacare, and just this last Thursday, you signed a largely symbolic executive order That's to protect people with pre-existing conditions five days before this debate. So my question, sir, is what is the Trump health care plan? Right. Well, first of all, I guess I'm debating you, not him, but that's OK. I'm not surprised. Let me just tell you something that <laughs> there's nothing symbolic. I'm cutting drug prices. I'm going with favored nations, which no president has the courage to do because you're going against big pharma. Drug prices will be coming down 80 or 90 percent. You could have done it during your 47 year period in government, but you didn't do it. <laughs> Nobody's done it. So we're cutting health care. All of the things condition? that we've done. Insulin. I give you an example. Insulin. It's going to it was destroying families, destroying people because I'm getting it for so cheap. It's like water. You want to know the truth. So cheap. Take a look at all of the drugs that what we're doing, prescription drug prices. We're going to allow our governors now to go to other countries to buy drugs okay. because when they fact, pay just a I, tiny fraction. As I say, this is open discussion. No, let but me this ask is you about, big, let me, this you'll is be happy, big stuff. Sir, you'll be happy. I'm about to pick up on one of your points. All right, Mark, you want to go first? Yeah, sure. So actually, as I'm first, let's talk about how he shows up and, and his dress, you know, the nonverbal of, of what he's wearing. Uh, he's a big lad. He's got a big body mass and he makes it even bigger with some shoulder pads there. And his, his arm comes right out from the shoulder pads. So he's filling what is quite a big suit there. So he's got that big upper body strength. And that is a big indicator of dominance. Uh, I'll leave out ideas of, of 
the idea of alpha, because it's unsure whether that is actually a thing. The idea of the alpha male comes from a study around wolves that were in captivity, and then that was transferred to you know, human beings who are not in captivity. So, but we do understand dominance. If something has big upper body strength, if it pushes us to the ground, we're done for. So seeing those big shoulders is a big dominant gesture. Super conservative tie. There's nothing more conservative than the blue and red stripe. That's a classic of conservatism. Big uh, lapel flag there. Also, it's a vital flag. I, it's kind of, it's blowing in the breeze. There's some movement in it as well. And I want you to notice the contrasting cuffs as well. The reason they've got their cuffs and, and Trump has got his cuffs pulled out is it's easier to see the hands. It's easier against a dark suit and a dark background when you've got white cuffs to see the gestures and they grab attention. So, uh, oh, and, and no pocket square at all. There's nothing flamboyant about his dress at all. Super conservative. Okay. So what happens for me in this? What's important for me is, is the nonverbal structure, the structure of this. It's meant to be a debate. Debates are never really debates. They don't follow debate structure. But he does say, oh, well, I guess I'm debating him now, i.e. the moderator. So he sounds out immediately, I'm going to break the perceived structure of the thing that I'm in right now. Now, this is classic Trump branding. And I dare say uh, there's no great mistake in this. His base feel like they've been abandoned by the classic structures of politics and government. So what better thing to do than actually say, you're going to break the structure that we're in right now. It does play to his base and it plays to his brand. So I thought that was a, a smart move by him, to use one of his own words, smart move by him to immediately break that structure. The last thing I want to point out around this is some of his wording. Uh, the use of a simile here. Uh, insulin, the cost, destroys families. I'm going to get it so cheap, it's like water. Now, we might think that, that Trump doesn't choose his words. He's not a smart guy, you know, depending on, you know, your bias. This is super clever. So water is the most essential thing. Eh, maybe air is, is a little more essential because you, you'll die in, in, in minutes without air. You'll die in days without water. Uh, food, you can go a long, long time without food. So potentially the second most important thing to us as humans. He likens it to water and, and notice the stress that he puts on that word water. That's really smart because he's offering the public something which is essential to them. And our idea that water is so essential, uh, it kind of should be free, it should be free to all, and the idea of water and freedom go together. So that's my take on this. Trump, always smarter and cleverer than many would hope he is, I would suggest. Uh, Greg? Greg? What you got? Sure. Yeah, this one's full of a lot of information. I'm going to start this by saying this show is a tale of two priests. Watch their body language. Trump looks like an Orthodox priest with his hand movement, and Biden looks like an evangelical with his hand movement. Really interesting to watch. When they're on message, they're the priest, and they're the holy warriors, and you'll see it a couple of times in here. Um, he starts by saying, I'll ask Joe, and he raises his forehead, and he uses his left hand, typically for him, I think of that as negative to point to Joe. Now, you could say, well, Joe's over there. But if he were positive about Joe, he may go this way. So I think there's some negative in there, even using the priestly hands. His hands never, Mark, I, I thought of you every time I saw this, his hands never cross his center. They're just not doing that. It's clear that he's had coaching along the way. And I'm not talking about today. His coaching goes way back and you can see it. He braces on the podium with his jaw set, prepared for conflict. And you can see this is the beginning of the frustration that he will show throughout this debate with a perceived, whether it's real or not, it doesn't matter whether something's real or not, it matters how you perceive it, that he's being unjustly treated by the moderator. You can see that. There's later places where it gets more pronounced. Uh, finally, when Wallace says, hey, let me ask my question, he does a classic New York thing. If you're, 
If you're involved with a New Yorker and you don't know what this means, you should learn. Go ahead. Go ahead says, if you must, the Southerner would say, if you must, he's saying, go ahead. Then he looks over and his blink rate increases when, when um, Wallace starts talking and he does something I call ruffling your plumage. He stands up straight, broadens his shoulders, and shows how big he is behind that podium, clearly sending a message of who he is and that he is the alpha in the room. It's, it's easy to follow. You can see he's frustrated with, with that. And then he starts illustrating and, and uh, opposing what Wallace is saying with his head, driving his head down. He, lips, he licks his lips in ready for retort. And then he goes to some internal conversations and that's really about that's really about him being ready. He's listening, he's listening, he's listening. He goes to internal conversations. His eyes go down to the left as he thinks about what he's going to say and then go back to the right as he's feeling some, some uh, frustration. And then his, the concern in his brow goes from up to down as he gets ready for the fight. His arms come away from his body in the attack on a negative toward Joe. And then the volume's up. And he goes at him. You could have done that in 47 years. That's the attack. His brow drops again. He's starting. And this is when you start seeing Biden's blink rate. Well, I'll leave that. Um, and then as Wallace starts to talk and he says, this is big stuff, he regulates by turning his hand over and pushing down and trying to control Wallace's speech. So here you're starting to see a pattern of frustration. I think he's trying to point out something he believes is pertinent about Biden and they stop him. And whether it's because he is doing something they don't believe is right in the debate structure or not, he feels frustrated with, with Wallace. He feels like Wallace is part of it. And I'll also say that in the process of this, both of these guys show some frustration with Wallace's kind of questioning style. So you'll see it in the, in the other guy as well. Okay. Um, Scott. All right. Well, here we see, uh, in what I'm seeing is this. When Trump begins to, um, to start delivering, in other words, he, the answer is loaded. He's ready with it. He's been rehearsing it. We see him as he goes through and he says, um, the most unpopular aspect of Obamacare, his illustrators are right on the money. They've got to be right on the money each time because if they're not, that suggests it to know that indicates that you're not sure about that answer or maybe you've got something else going up there. You're thinking about something else as you're giving that answer. They must land on the money. And we see, like, I'm going to sort of focus on illustrators and regulators during this because there are so many of them. Another thing we see is um, a small grimace of anger. As when he says, when uh, Chris Wallace says, just uh, this last Thursday, you signed a marginally symbolic ex uh, executive order to protect people with pre existing conditions. That's when you see it. And you'll see him do that classic thing where he goes, and you see this, this little grimace. It's, it's, it's not a micro expression because you can, you can see it really well, but that's what pops up. So he doesn't like what's going on. He feels like he's under attack from Chris Wallace as well. The, um, also, when as he goes through this, he's not doing what you you would usually do if two people are fighting or two people are fussing, uh, as Trump delivers. Because what he's doing is he's he's decided I'm going to give this answer. This may not be go perfectly with what the question was, but this is the answer I'm given. And as he goes through, he doesn't try to talk over Chris Wallace. He just keeps giving his answer. And although Chris Wallace is flailing around, saying "stop, slow down," and all that, and then um, Biden, you know, um, says a few things as well. He keeps, he keeps delivering his answer to make sure he gets that answer out. And as soon as he gets that thing answered, you see him go back and he almost goes to arrest as he, as he goes back to his, his form there behind the podium. Chase, what do you got? Well, you guys covered just about everything there. Uh, in this, this, little, this little bump that Trump does as he's hearing the question, he knows how to answer. He knows how he's going to respond. The first time I ever saw this described was I was about 19 years old. I was watching a news channel and Tanya Ryman was analyzing a debate. And one of, one of the guys did this. This is one of the first body language things I learned. And I learned it from Tanya. And she called it a postural bump on TV. And this little postural shift is someone kind of just cocking the gun. They're getting their body ready to go. They have everything prepared and they're on message. I think he specifically wove in this quote about big pharma to win over the other side a little bit. And I think that was excellently crafted. 
One more thing is the closer his fingers are together, the more certain he is of the message. So if he starts to get a little vague, he'll say, we've got this, this, and this, and most likely, you know, next month we're going to have this. And you'll see the fingers start to spread apart. And that's a great one to watch for with the rest of the debates and the ones coming up here. And when I was in preschool, my teacher's name was Miss Kennedy, and she had a little sparkly tube that we would have to pass around, and that was called the conversation stick. You had to, you had to hold that to be able to talk, and I think maybe – we need one of these in the next debate. Wow. Yeah, I think when I was in preschool, my teacher's name was Methuselah or something. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, this is a handful. Okay. So you guys are ready for Biden? Good. That's great stuff. All right. Here we go. All right. Chase, what do you got? We see some masterful training here in that there are some key phrases that he's interjecting here. And he's interrupting a little bit, not as much as Trump did, but he's interrupting a little bit and showing us that he hasn't cut health care and he'll throw it in there. And I think this laugh that we're seeing is some of them, especially the first laugh, was late. It was kind of a delayed response. And I think that's a result of training. And I think his coaches are telling him, which is effective, the more you look at Trump while he's talking or the more you look at Trump while you're addressing him, the more credibility you're going to give him on cameras. So he's looking away. Even when he's speaking, he's not, he's not necessarily directing a lot of his words towards Trump. And he's trying not to look at Trump while he's speaking. And I think it's effective for letting the viewers know what he thinks about Trump and maybe by association what they should think about Trump. And the recurring theme here is that we are seeing him take up a little bit less space, and I think he's referring to his notes, or he's looking down, and that is his theme in any kind of stress response. We see him looking down, and Trump's stress response, we see him back away, he's creating space and creating distance, but Biden is uh, becoming a little bit smaller here. But I think those little key phrases that he's throwing in here in the middle are effective for him, and they are effective in persuading the person that's watching, which is where he is directing all of that towards the people who might be confused about voting, where Trump is directing everything primarily towards his base. Scott, what do you got? Um, I think what I'm seeing here, and I'll take, I'll take this part of it, when we see Biden, he's standing like he should, like I think Mark would show him to stand. And he's standing exactly like a pro would stand. He stands, he looks like a president. He looks like he should. He comes out, his arms are straight. His suit is together, man. And he's, and he's, he speaks slowly. He gets his point across and everything. His hands uh, at this point on the podium are just, are relaxed as they're, as, and there's his arms are straight as he's doing that. And as things go along, he still, his arms get, they straighten out even more. So they're almost all the way straight as he, as he makes sure he's got a grip on that podium. The grip doesn't come into play yet, but it will in a few minutes. So that's what we're seeing there. Whereas as he looks at Trump, the, the, the more Trump goes on, the more Trump goes on, the less and less he looks like he should look. His suit starts to get a little wrinkled looking. He straightens up and, and, and it fixes some. But he doesn't have that overall look that he should have if you're coming on like a president. He's not still. He's not. He's not playing the alpha role in this, his alpha role again is coming from the fussing part, trying to win the, the, uh, the, the fight or fuss. I'm going to keep calling it fuss. So in my case, that, that, that's what I'm seeing. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is an interesting one. So the couple of things to notice when Trump is talking is he is thinking. Uh, mammals, for some reason, seem to do this when we're thinking, when we're figuring things out. I train horses. Horses, when they get a concept, they go, it's really easy to know when they're thinking. Humans do the same thing. When you're a child and you're coloring, you have your tongue out of your mouth and your parents have to say, hey, stop doing that. That's human nature. We work our mouth when we're thinking. Pay attention to people doing it. Some people talk when they're thinking and mumble, but you can see he's working something over. And he's also having an internal conversation of some sort. And he's quietly amused while um, Wallace is in his accusatory style asking a question. Now, here's an interesting thing. This is how conspiracy theories kind of get brought up, is people start looking for indicators. 
At one point, he quickly cuts his eyes to the left immediately. For me, that's an auditory accessing cue where somebody says something to you and your eyes go to the left. He's also kind of slack jawed when he's sitting there. And people have conjectured he's wearing a wire and he's listening to someone. Is that possible? Sure, it's possible. But the, um, the, usually what happens is people are looking for some reason to solve a problem. Yeah. So remember, conspiracy theories start when people don't have enough information and they immediately fill in negative information. And the quicker you go to negative, the harder it is to go back and clean that information up. We talked about this in our bias segment. So if a person sees a slack jaw, eyes suddenly cut to the left, and a guy suddenly come up with a concept, that sounds like somebody just told him that. So you can start to figure that out. But now I'll also tell you the other one to remember is that when he's walking through this, that thinking and all of that could have brought back some of his coaching. As a SEER instructor, we teach people under high duress, knowing that when they get to a point that they're hitting high duress, it will come back. That memory comes back. Chase, guarantee you something you were taught, if I grabbed your clothes and snatched you around a little bit, you'd remember it very quickly, just because that's how we taught it. Anyway, his eyes cut hard to the left. He suddenly engages and he stands straight. When he says, I'm debating you as well or not him, you see that amusement. <laughs> he kind of does that little chuckle. And then his face breaks away from his standard big broad smile into one where he's kind of got a pursed lips and disagreeing with the comment. And then he starts mouth grooming and his eye blink rate increases the minute that that Trump attacks him. So you can start to see that he's disapproving. He does a lot of that chuckling and big, broad, shiny teeth smile. That's a stress move for him. That is a deflection move. He uses it all the time. So it's standard Joe. I think here he's starting to get under his skin and you'll see other places in the, in the debate, he'll back off and he'll make his arms rigid to your point, Scott. So he's remembering to stand back. That's what I saw. I see a lot of possible confusion in, you know, whether somebody's talking to him or whether it's something he's recalling, which you can see a tremendous amount of information. And Mark, we'll let you bring this home and wrap this one up. Yeah, so let's uh, just talk about, first of all, how Joe shows up. Uh, so Scott, you're right. Beautiful, beautiful suit, nice tailoring. However, uh, what happens is, is the shoulders are too built up in my, in my view, which means when it starts to wrinkle here, you see that his body frame is way more slight than the suit is. It's trying to produce more um, upper body strength than he actually has in his, in his bones, essentially. So he starts to look a little bit weaker in the frame or slighter in the frame as his arms come up into what I would call the passion plane. He gets more excited. It actually makes his top half look a little bit slighter, a little bit weaker. Great cuff contrast. That's really good. We can see his gestures. Let's talk about the pocket square. He's wearing a pocket square. It's got three little peaks on it. That's what we call a crown fold. So there's something very regal about putting a pocket square in like that with the peaks of a crown on it. It kind of says, well, I'm aristocracy. I'm a little bit better. My point would be that doesn't really play to the people you might be wanting to change the mind of. Look, whether you're left or right, the people who vote for you are always going to vote for you. They're never going to change their mind. They're voting for an ideology, not necessarily you. You are the avatar of that ideology. You're looking to swing some people, not at the extremes. You'll never swing those at all. But some people are kind of, yeah, I could make a different choice. But you've got to play to that audience. You don't sing to the choir. You have to bring them across. I don't think his pocket square is going to do a great job of bringing those people across in the way it is. Though they may have been looking for a kind of a jagged tooth look to it, potentially a bit of a bite to it. All the same, it's silk. Silk doesn't bite that well. And then we have with that the candy cane tie. It's a little bit frivolous. It's a little bit light. Certainly but wouldn't be the way that I'd have advised him. Now, so I got another contention with his team who are advising him. I think you're, everybody's right saying that that laughter is a little bit late. And I think you're exactly right. He's been told, hey, laugh at what he says. But that's what Hillary did. In the last debate, she tried that tactic and it didn't work so well for her. So I wouldn't be trying to play those tactics at all. Uh, and, and what tends to happen is if he's not laughing, he's looking at Trump and doing nothing. 
So he's just giving him focus. He gets it right when he comes finally down the camera, but then he goes deadpan and nothing happens. And that would be the point to show some emotion to that audience. A very simple shake of the head at the audience, looking them will get them to mirror that emotion because that's one of the things you're trying to do. I think as Chase was saying, you look down that camera and you give the audiences, uh, the audience emotions to follow so they can have an emotion, an opinion, and an idea about your opposition. I don't think he's getting the best help he could around some of this. Yes, a lot of training, but not super well thought out around some of that detail. That's what I've got on that one. So Mark, you're not getting the check? <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting the check. This is an <laughs> advert for me. Like you've still got time. You've still got time to send me a check, okay? And I can help. The moment, no check, no help. <laughs> <laughs> I got lied about that uh, pocket square. I want to get... Well, tell us about your pocket square there, Mark. What about oh, yours? Is, I'm terrible at pocket squares. I got a, I got a mate, um, Nick, who, who's Italian. And every time he sees me with my pocket square, he like takes it out and, and he does it. And he like goes, here's how you do it. Because I literally just, I stuff it in and it disappears down as well. I'm, I'm terrible with this. Uh, as a kid, I used to work in menswear. Um, <laughs> like I think from the age of kind I believe of school, it. I had a Saturday job. I believe know? if I went to the beach, I believe one day if I go to the beach, like I told you guys, I don't, I'm a member of the great indoors, so I don't go to the beach much. If I took my shirt off, you could see my heart like a newborn fish. But if I were to go to the beach, I think we'd be there 30 minutes, and Amber would say, look at that guy out in the water. He's wearing a suit. And I'd be like, hey, shit, that's Bowden. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you wear him everywhere. Hello, everybody. So. I'm just... <laughs> The worst part me. Of Obama. Let me ask my question. Well, I'll, I'll ask Joe. I, 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 the individual no, I, mandate was the most unpopular Vice aspect of Obamacare. I got rid of it. I'd like and to, we will protect Mr. people. President, I'm the moderator of this debate, and I would like you to let me ask my question, and then you can answer Go your ahead. question. You, in the course of these four years, have never come up with a comprehensive plan to replace Obamacare. And just this last Thursday, you signed a largely symbolic executive order to Listen. protect people with pre-existing conditions five days before this debate. So my question, sir, is what is the Trump health care plan? Right. Well, first of all, I guess I'm debating you, not him, but that's okay. I'm not surprised. Let me just tell you something. that <laughs> There's nothing symbolic. I'm cutting drug prices. I'm going with favored nations, which no president has the courage to do because you're going against big pharma. Drug prices will be coming down 80 or 90 percent. You could have done it during your 47 year period in government, but you didn't do it. Nobody's <laughs> done it. So we're cutting health care. All of the things condition. that we've done. Insulin. I give you an example. Insulin. It's going to it was destroying families, destroying people because I'm getting it for so cheap. It's like water. You want to know the truth. So cheap. Take a look at all of the drugs that what we're doing, prescription drug prices. We're going to allow our governors now to go to other countries to buy drugs okay. because when they fact, pay just a I, tiny fraction. As I say, this is open do. discussion. No, let me this ask is you big, about, let me, this you'll is be happy, big stuff. Sir, you'll be happy. I'm about to pick up on one of your points. Okay, here we go. Shit, fellas. That's okay. We're good. Oh, we're damn, good. I ride, I ride this. I'll see my pants. Here we go. I did, that. I did that. one of those you sent me. It was like last second. I didn't even get to see. Oh, it. man. You, you know what's going to happen is all the comments will be, yeah, Scott nailed it. Like, he had. Yeah, you, you, but you wait and see. I'll get somebody else say something. That one one got about chewing gum. It's just like way yeah. up. I didn't realize I was chewing gum until halfway through. I was like, oh, and you can see. And then I'll lean over and spit it That's out in the floor. That's me under a pseudonym. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, probably. <laughs> That's right. It's probably That's you. <laughs> All right. You should go out and vote. You're in voting now. Vote and let your senators know how you strongly you feel. Court? Let vote now. Are you gonna pack the Make court? sure you, in fact, let people know he doesn't want you're to a senator. The question. I'm not going to answer the question Why because, would you that because question? the question you is the question is the question left. Will you shut who is up, on, man? Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This Who's is on your so list? right, gentlemen. This is, I think this we've is ended so this. unprecedented. Here we go, Greg. What do you got? Sure. This is what I call holy warrior. This is, remember I said tale of two priests. This is Biden, the evangelical. He's on. The interesting piece is this is a redirect from being asked, will you stack the court? 
and he did some rambling, well, whatever it is, now you people vote, vote, vote. He, I call that insulation with your constituents. So I'm insulating myself from the issue by saying it's not my issue. This is about the people and the people need to vote. And every politician does this at least once. I've watched them do it. I've seen Trump do it. I've seen all of them do it. But he's insulating himself in the, I call it insulating yourself in the holy robe of the voter. That's what they're doing. You can't, you can't attack them without it, attacking the voter. And he goes into what if you go look at a picture of Billy Graham illustrating with one hand, he looks like Billy Graham. However, and his brows are up, his tone's up, his cadence is up, he's preaching. However, Billy Graham doesn't usually get a heckler, and he does. So off from the side, there's this voice saying, tell him what you're going to do, Joe. Are you going to do it? And really with a, a, a cynical voice. So he starts to get frustrated. If you look, the corner of his mouth start to come down, his teeth get exposed, and then he looks like Billy Graham with a heckler. So he starts to get really frustrated. And then he repeats the questions, likely having been taught this under stress that if you repeat the question, it gives you room and then you get a chance to relax, but it's not working for him. And you start to see the fight or flight kick in. And this is the beginning of him losing control and this thing escalating. Trump came ready for the fight. He came ready for a fight, but not Trump's fight. So you can see it walking down. Then he goes, brow down and his thinking brain turns off and his, his angry cat mammal brain turns on and says, shut up, man. Game over. Now he's, in tur he's on Trump's turf. He's in a different place than he came prepared for and we'll see where he go. Then finally, he takes the high ground, braces and tries to go back to being Billy Graham. That's what I got. Long-winded, but Scott, what do you got? Um, I thought this was really interesting because the more Trump gets into his head, the, the less his, his illustrators hit on the money. And as he's talking, he says some really odd things, and his wording is odd. He's got, his, his answer is loaded. By that, I mean he's, he's got it. He's practiced it. He's rehearsed it. But he hasn't rehearsed it with somebody up his hind end the whole time they were doing it with, without the stress on it. Uh, we talked earlier today, Greg, about stress and, and learning under stress and, 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 uh, and Chase, where we, we talked about what happens there and how you can recall that situation easier. He had no stress when he was learning, when he was learning this answer to this. So he said the word usage and delivery is really odd because he says, um, you're in voting now. I don't know. I don't know what that means. And, it says, and then, then he talks about, he says, make sure you, in fact, let people know. And then to pause your senators. I think as he goes along, he's trying to remember Again, like Greg was saying, as he's as he's coming in for his his uh, Trump's coming in for the attack, he's trying to keep everything straight. You know, he's an older guy, so it's gonna be a little tougher for him. But he can't get that answer out because he's he's confusing him. He's coming in just stirring things up while he's trying to. It's like trying to thread a needle while there's somebody setting off firecrackers around you. Is what's <laughs> happening there? Then we see in his face, we see disdain a couple of times or contempt, and we see it right in here. But it's on as you're looking at him. I guess it'd be on this side. I guess is what y'all would see. Um, on his left side or right, yeah, his right side. Um, as, as he's giving, as he's talking, the more Trump gets in, you'll see that pop up just a little bit. It's subtle, but you have to see it. I'll go back and grab a, a thing of it. Like Mark is doing a little short clips for Instagram and Twitter. And I'll let you see, and, and I'll show you what I'm talking about on that. Cause that pops up because he's starting to get mad. He's starting to get angry. He's starting these Trump's in his head at this point. Chase, what do you got? In the military, we have a phrase I did 20 years, and this is every time we do training. It is train how you fight because you're going to fight how you trained. And we could tell this was not rehearsed. This was well rehearsed without stress. So military training does stress you way out for all of this stuff. It's not only you have to be able to shoot a gun. you got to be able to shoot a gun with a face full of pepper spray. There's sand in your uniform. You just ran a mile. There's a guy screaming in your face. And you're going to fail an entire course if you don't make this one shot. So, I mean, And that's inoculation. They call it stress inoculation. And I think, I very much believe that he, he was on message. We saw those hands come up together. They were on message, and the more he got interrupted, the less his hands matched the beat of what he was saying. And we saw that sentence kind of fall apart. And that's, uh, we'll probably all say, give or take the same stuff here, and I'll, I'll pass it to Mark. 
Yeah, so I've got to agree with everything said there, especially the stress testing thing, okay? And, and when I work with a politician, we absolutely stress test. It's fine to have your messaging. That's fine. But what I'll do is I will interview them to find out what is the thing I can say about them that will most trigger them. And as they're delivering messages, I'm right up in their ear and I'm whispering that trigger into their ear. And they have to learn how to manage that aggression, that anger, that, that um, subjugation that might come up with, with that message being put in their head. Sometimes we'll get two people doing different messages in the ears. Without stress testing it, you got nothing because you don't know your physical countermeasures. Here's the problem for Biden. He goes symmetrical, it goes asymmetrical first of all, and he shouldn't be. He should be going for symmetry every time because it blinkers you and it gets you focused down the camera. So every time he goes symmetrical, easy to knock him off. He's got Trump talking in his ear and we can see very, very quickly, it cascades into word soup for him. I have no idea what he starts to, to talk about. Intelligent guy, but easy to knock off. And he hasn't been taught the countermeasure of come back to symmetry. It's no good thinking, well, I can psychologically block it out or pivot to another message. You have to create the body first, which is going to trigger the mind into being stable. So not great help and training there. And then what happens is he, he, he does word soup, he gets pulled back into Trump as well. So he's totally off balance. Um, he becomes defeated, he becomes angry, and then he kind of decries the unfairness of it all and looks to the moderator for, for help and, and essentially judgment. You know, this is not very presidential, looking for, for judgment. Uh, I would say it's a complete cascade disaster there for, for Biden. Excellent. Okay. We good? Yeah. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, lovely. So I mainly want to feature on this uh, dig gesture that uh, Trump does. And it's a classic for him. He does it quite a lot. In the previous video we saw, he did that gesture on, um, on protect people. And it just comes down. He goes, protect people. Uh, you know, he's enforcing that idea. He's, he's digging in on this, that idea. In this one, he does what I would call a psychological gesture, which is it has, it has an idea in it um, about, about what's happening in his mind or what he wants people to think in their minds. And he does an uncovering gesture. He scrapes away the surface dirt from this. And I think the surface dirt he wants us to feel like he's scraping away uh, is the idea of radical left and that Biden has, has some uh, dark motives of putting a radical left in the Supreme Court, and he's taking off that dirt so that we can see underneath what he's really trying to do here in his mind or his base, his mind or in the, his party's uh, mind. Uh, so look out for that one there. Um, the other thing I want to put, put out there is just the repetitive badgering rhythm and tone <laughs> yeah if you really want to annoy somebody just say the same short sentence again and again and again it's like a pestering child and and um we often call that primal cadence so this this repetition that you're getting is the pestering child primal cadence and it is enough to cause any parent to, to buy the, the candy at the supermarket <laughs> checkout, yeah? Other primal cadences are things like, ah, mommy, mommy. Again, it will have that kind of, uh, and you'll, know, you'll see that police alarms or alarms ah, have that primal cadence because it's super annoying. So again, no wonder Biden gets knocked off because Trump is using this primal rhythm in order to disrupt his instinct, to grab his instinct so that any training which, he, which is intellectual isn't going to work against primal cadence. You need a primal training, which is, tends to be just nonverbal behaviors that you do on purpose in order to countermeasure 
a primal trigger there. That's what I got for you. Yeah. You know, Mark, it's a little different. We're all Southern boys that, that primal cadence in the grocery store gets you something else. Usually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Chase, what do you got? Well, we see a guy here who is highly charismatic. Biden is very charismatic. You don't stay in office that long without having some serious charisma. He's obviously social, socially intelligent. He's a very intelligent guy. And Trump's team have no doubt gone through 40 some odd years and picked out every moment that this guy was knocked off balance. And they said, this is the thing that caused it. Here's the sound. Here's the tone. Here's the exact cadence that caused everything. And as, as Mark said, uh, back in the day in this influence training and stuff, they used to call this the voice roll technique. And he's using that here. And I think that Trump had this prepared for who knows what. These, all these scripted, few really short, punchy lines the moment he sees Biden look straight at the camera and gets very serious, he knows there's a very solid point coming out. He drops those right away and just keeps hammering and hammering. And it, it looks to be very effective here because it was, a, it was a, a decline, a very quick decline here. And we see his, him just telling Trump to shut up at the end where he, I think that's, that's characteristic Biden. Same guy who said he wants to beat up Trump or challenge a guy to push-ups. So that was, that was, that's his default behavior. Extremely smart, but they figured out this is the trigger to get him off balance. But he probably had a great message there. He was looking at the camera, and he probably had a great, wonderful message to give out, but it was disrupted with some very sharp, calculated techniques there. Greg? Yeah, I'm going to take him down whole body. I'm going to say, look at his face. He's doing classic Trump regulators, doing all kinds of stuff with his face, kind of you know, making faces at, at Biden, trying to bait him in that way. He's using language, many things, far left. Are you going to answer Joe? He's not going to answer the question. Just all of that rhythmic attack. His eyes, he will make eye contact, hard eye contact, and then back to the camera. So he's trying to create this draw from Trump back, I mean, sorry, from Biden back to the audience on the camera to say, look at him. He's not answering the question. And, and then his voice to your point, that primal, that poke, 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 poke. And then finally he's doing something. If you don't think he's engaged and knows what he's doing, he's doing this body surfing thing. Like he's playing pinball and that's his brain punctuating its thoughts as he's batting this thing back and forth. So really good indicator of what he's thinking. He knows what he's doing and he's also waiting. I can guarantee you for that little snap that he expects to come from Biden. And then it's on Scott. What do you got? Wow. All right. Well, um, I, my thing is more again, I uh, going back to the fussing when you see uh, as, as Trump begins lobbing his, his uh, volleys of, you know, his fussing over there, he's leaned back. He's got his, his arm this way, almost like he's looking at him and, and Hey man, here's the way it actually works. Here's a, you know, it's like he's dismissing him. It's very, dis very dismissive. So I think he's, and he's braced though at the same time. So he's ready for that. He's in attack mode, but as he, as he goes into attack mode, he's like, He's pushed back some, but at the same time, he keeps his arm forward as he's lobbing his, his uh, bombs over that way to, to attack. And then after what all you guys have said, I got nothing after that. <laughs> I got, you left me with nothing. That's a good one, guys. Very, very good one. Yeah. Great. You should go out and vote. You're in voting now. Vote and let your senators know how you strongly you feel. Court? Let Vote now. Are you going to pack the Make court? sure you, in fact, let people know he doesn't you're want to a senator. The I'm not going to answer the question. Why because, would you answer that question? Because the you question want to put is, a lot of the new question Supreme is, Court justice, the radical question, left. Will you who shut is up, your, man? Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This Who's is on your so list? Right. Gentlemen, this is, I think this we've is ended so this. He's going to pack the court. No, I, I, the answer to the question is no. Ukraine. It, no, I, sir. With a billion dollars, if you that don't get rid of the You know what? You're wait, not stop. true. You're, you're doing it. You're going to have tape. true. Gentlemen, is, <laughs> I, I hate to raise Chris, my voice, but I see it tape. seems to be. Uh, why should I be different than the two of you? So here's the deal. Good point. We have five, six segments. We have ended that segment. Can't hear you. 
you. I was hoping you guys were going to nod with me and just let Scott talk for a minute. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> that was, you were pontificating. You were clearly. In- <laughs> <laughs> I was on, man. Uh, this one I got. You know, this is obvious. I've watched it one time, but I'm going to tear it. All right, <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is the good one where Chris Wallace is wishing for the days of his father or Walter Cronkite, where they had some kind of authority. And if they went like this, Trump would have said, uh, but there is none of that authority. I was having a great conversation with a guy yesterday who said exactly that. The fragmentation of the news industry has taken away the most trusted man in the world was Walter Cronkite. If he said, Mr. Trump, please be quiet. He probably would have been. That's not the case anymore. So this guy's power comes from regulators and that kind of thing. And an interesting couple of things. He doesn't know how to use a regulator because that means stop. This means punch me in the face. This means I'm helpless. And Mark, I would venture to say, I'll use, I'll use one of your concepts for a minute. If his elbows weren't on the table, his hands would be in grotesque. He just doesn't know how to control the conversation. And he's been a little snarky in his questioning of both these guys. And so they're coming back at him. Um, At the end, his blink rate is through the roof. And that's where I say, and I'll leave it at that. I won't steal everybody else's thunder. But I think he's wishing for the days of Walter Cronkite at this point. Uh, Chase, what do you got? I'll just pick up on that, that one thing Greg talked about here. I call this the stop gesture. And if you're ever trying to convince someone not to do something or convince someone to stop doing something, your hands will extend or at least one hand will extend, even if it's down at your side or in your pocket or in your purse. Our hands do this. I've analyzed a video before where it was an ATM machine video, but somebody's leaning in talking to somebody and they thought this person might be an accomplice. But the whole time, their hands are doing this. Their hands are extending down at their sides. And I said, this person's trying to talk them out of this. This person's trying to stop them. So Chris is doing this, but he also has that surrender. We tend to expose our palms when we want to appear vulnerable or innocent, especially when we're saying, I didn't eat the candy or I didn't take the cookies. Chris does this here, and he's losing control of of both of these guys. And frankly, neither one of their behavior is presidential, as as Joe Biden commented earlier. I'll pass it over to you, Scott. All right. So here's what I got. (laughs) We're seeing this is this is an explosion of, of of a combination of regulators and illustrators. We're seeing not only we're we seeing the the illustrators come out as he's trying to as, as Chris Wallace is talking. We see him illustrating for everybody to shut up. This is like children. This is like a a, a, a literally a playground fuss. Trump looks like he feels like he's getting in trouble, and or, and and Joe's so upset because he's the kid who doesn't know how to fight very well. So it, that's what we're that's what what we're seeing there. The, the fight or flight on, on Chris Wallace comes out, and Greg had, had said last night on TV, like you can even see part of his hand shaking as he's doing this. His face looks normal. He's doing a great job of, of keeping it in control. Plus, he's on TV and so the base is a big deal. But I think actually he's flipped over into fight or flight, so he's getting a little bit, he's getting a little bit worked up. Um, one of the things that I found really interesting, a lot of people say, well, this guy's for, he's for uh, Biden or he's for Trump. One thing I found fascinating was this was the last thing he says. And one of the last things he says during that, that explosion of the illustrators and regulators, he says, here's the deal. Who says here's the deal? That's one of Joe's catchphrases. Look, here's the deal. Hey, man, that's, those are the things he says. So he says that, which tells me he may lean on, on the this, this side of Joe. I could be completely wrong, and I could be thinking of him like, like we're hoping people don't think about us. But that's what it looks like to me as he's sort of leaning toward that, toward that way. But what are you gonna say, Greg? Yeah, I think he's actually come out and said he leans more uh, more left than right. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and he's he's candid up front. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, there you have it. Okay, Mark. Yeah. What do you got? <laughs> you just edit me out at the end. Uh, okay. So interesting. So I call um, 
regulators, moderators. So it's no surprise that the moderator here could do with some moderators. And he does have some, he is using some of those baton gestures and illustrators as moderators to control the way people are speaking and acting. However, I would say his, his, his moderators, his regulators don't have a line of energy coming out. There is no locking of the joints. And if you don't lock the joints, you won't have any power or authority. And so we see at points where he hasn't locked out his joints and he starts doing this gesture as a regulator. And you can see it has no power in it. So of course, they paid zero attention to him. He's also sat very, very low. So they have height dominance over him. He is slight in that chair. He's a huge distance away from them. There is, an, Greg, you're absolutely right. And, and Chase is a master around this of, of the idea of authority. He has zero authority uh, because of culture at the moment and because of how he's placed in that space. Something has to change about the way they're using that space in order for him to have any kind of physical authority and therefore authority over the structure. So flimsy uh, regulators uh, there. And you're right, he's, he's not helped by he's got a desk there, which means that he's, he's, support, he's not supporting himself either. He's not ready to go. He's not ready to jump in and split those people apart. So we can't use any of these psychological gestures that you might use to say, look, quiet and down, break it up. Because those psychological gestures would trigger the physical response you're looking for. Uh, one little interesting point here. This, this gesture here is, yes, absolutely, the surrender gesture. If it was really a stop you would push forward, you do the push away gesture. So this is the surrender gesture. Um, in uh, Roman oratory, in Roman rhetoric, this was known as the protego gesture, which is actually the gesture that you would put up if you felt somebody was casting an evil spell on you in the Senate. You know, they were cursing you in the, in the Senate. So, uh, and, and if you go and uh, look at the old books from the 17th century on what they called universal hand gestures, but there wasn't really anything universal about them. They were more kind of signals. This is a universal signal for uh, I've had enough because it exposes the belly. It goes, okay, I'm vulnerable. My little dog, I always talk about Peach. Peach does this all the time. You go down in the morning, she rolls over, she puts the balls up like this, and she says, you're in charge. And I've given you charge, and therefore, uh, what I get back is, is, a, is a belly scratch. You know, and the deal goes uh, in, in that way. So he goes, you know, here's the deal. <laughs> here's the deal on this. Um, look, uh, yeah, that's all, that's all I've got on that. You, just very weak performance from him, you know, giving up in the end and saying, please don't, please don't cast your evil spirits on me. There are two for him. There are maybe two evil spirits up on stage and all he can do is put up a barrier of protection around himself. There you go. Excellent. No, I, I, the answer to the question is no. Ukraine. It, no, I, sir. With a billion sir, dollars, if you that don't get rid of the you know what? You're, wait, wait, not stop. true. You're, tape you're doing it. You're going to have tape. true. Gentlemen, is, <laughs> I hate to raise Chris, my voice, but I see it tape. seems to be. Uh, why should I be different than the two of you? So here's the That's deal. Good point. We have f f six segments. We have ended that segment. All right. Does anybody else got anything they want to add to this? Okay. So, yeah, Scott, this is not the last one we're going to do. This is just the intro. We tried to get more videos. We have a list of videos we're going to cover. We'll break this up over the next few weeks, assuming that something hotter doesn't come along, which I can't imagine will be hotter than this. Then that's our next steps is to break this into others. Yeah, lovely. So we hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got little bits that you're thinking, wow, it'd be great for, to look at that piece or that piece or what does this mean, then put it in the comments below and uh, feel free to chat with each other uh, about it. You know, we're trying to help you be experts as well. So make sure you let each other know what you think and what you want to look at and discuss it with each other and us. Exactly. Now, don't forget, you want to uh, subscribe. Just hit the, hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell so it lets you know when you got something coming out. So there you have it. All right. We all good? We're yeah. good. Thanks, everybody. Right. Thanks. Yeah. See you next time.
Ah, bicho, não vai receber, não, você é louco.